Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information and this is my 2007 BMW 650i and of course it's got the N62 V8 engine in it very powerful just as fast as anything else on the road but of course as soon as you say N62 engine people are going to say to you stem seals or they say oil leaks alternator bracket harsh gear changes you're throwing your money, mate. What, what have you bought that for? It's going to go wrong in a, just a couple of thousand miles. Well, I've had this over five years. I've done 120,000 miles and I haven't got those problems. So what's the difference between this car and a car you can buy now, which the stem seals have failed on already? Right, well, the whole purpose of, of this video is to go through all the things you can do to make sure that this car is going to last a long time. I mean, we're having cars at the moment which have got sort of 2010 models and they've got stem sales which are failing already and it's cost their owners a lot of money to repair it. Now, of course, at 2007, this is quite an old car and having the stem seals replaced by BMW is financially not viable. <laughs> it's going to cost you six grand which is more than the car's worth. I mean, you can get a 2007 model, maybe a bit earlier, for around 5,000 quid. The cars aren't worth a lot, and the reason for that is because of the stem seals and the oil leaks and the harsh gear changes and the alternator bracket and whatever else they can think of to try and belittle the car, usually said by someone with a 116i4 pot, to be honest. But no, it is not inevitable that all these things are going to go wrong and we're going to go through every single thing you can do to make sure your stem seal is going to hang on in there and also that your oil leaks are going to be reduced as well if not stopped completely for just a few quid and also how to fix harsh gear changes because this first mechatronics box was well known for harsh gear changes and when I bought this I went through three or four other 650i's they all had harsh gear changes and I didn't want to buy them because I had enough problems with the old E38s with their harsh gear changes on that. So I bought this one and sure enough about a year later I started getting harsh gear changes on it and the fix for it is really cheap. Well of course, of course apart from of course the cost of the ATF in the first first place I mean that's quite expensive but anyway, at 100,000 miles, it's time you change the gearbox fluid anyway, uh, because it does break down. And even though it's meant to be sealed for life, it has to be replaced. And at the same time, I had a couple of seals replaced and those made all the difference. And they do go wrong on all of these gearboxes in the N62, the six speed boxes from ZF. They all suffer from the same thing. But fortunately, while you're changing the fluid, it's really cheap, cheap to rectify those problems. OK, so let's go through all the things we can do to make your car what it is, which is a luxury fast cruiser. This should be the envy of anyone with a 116i. Right, first of all, is it inevitable that uh, this engine in this car, this N62 engine and a 2007 6 Series 650, is it inevitable that things are going to go wrong with it, such as the stem seals? Well, the answer to that is no, it isn't inevitable as long as the engine is looked after. And the most important thing for the N62 engine is oil changes. It's as simple as that. Now, if I go by the iDrive, let's have a look at my service information. My next oil change is due in 18,000 miles. Well, I tell you this for nothing, the stem seals would have been well gone by then. Now, if you follow the iDrive information, your car's just going to die and it's going to die pretty quickly. And that's the problem with the N62. It was fine for the first few years, the first three years that it was at BMW, being BMW maintained from the main dealer. They would have done oil services uh, using lifeguard oil, which is got great longevity it's going to last for a couple of years or so but unfortunately after that three years is up and the car moves down the food chain the person who spent sixty thousand pounds on this car has now moved on to a newer model and it goes a bit further down the food chain and then 
the oil changes will be done short against the eye drive and that means that we won't be using lifeguard oil be using something inferior and then things will start breaking down and it wasn't long before cars of, with the N62 engine started breaking down. It's five, six, seven years and that's it. They started having huge problems. And the main reason for that is they weren't using the lifeguard oil which was specifically designed to be used in BMW engines with hugely long service intervals. I mean they're just mad. Um, we're having service intervals of 15,000 miles and more and by that time the oil's broken down. Um, yep, the most volatile parts of the oil will start to evaporate and it's the same with petrol. Everyone knows that if you leave the car for a couple of years, change the petrol in it. It's very important because the car's not going to run properly with old petrol because of all the volatile elements have uh, evaporated and you end up with some sort of soup which then starts eating your fuel lines and the fuel pump. So well known for petrol, less known for oil, but it's the same situation. The oil degrades over time, no matter how short a mileage it's had on it. Sure, it breaks down during uh, driving. So if you manage to drive 20,000 miles in six months or so, your engine's gonna last a lot longer because at least you've got an oil change every six months. And that's also brings us on to the point why it's the lower mileage cars which seem to be the problem. Long mile cars like this one with over 120,000 miles and it never had any smoking problems at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years of use. So what was the difference? Well, the difference was this got oil changes a lot more regularly than the low mileage cars. And of course, on a low mileage car. You may well follow the iDrive instructions of the change. The change is now due at 18,000 miles, in which case the oil would have broken down. And when the most volatile parts of the oil uh, are evaporated, then you start losing the properties of the oil, which is in addition to its lubricating properties. And that's those that maintain the softness and suppleness of rubbers and plastics. And of course, the stem seal Let's go to why the stem seal fails. And the stem seal, if you didn't know, it's actually designed to pass a small amount of oil. It's meant to be there to lubricate the valve guides themselves. If you don't get any lubrication past the stem seals, uh, then you'll seize up the valves. So they are designed to let a certain amount of oil pass. Unfortunately, if you don't have plasticizers in the oil, and uh, stuff which maintains the suppleness of rubbers and plastics, then they'll start to wear. And in that situation, there's nothing much you can do about them. They go brittle and they wear around the annulus of the uh, stem seal. And that means the hole gets bigger and nothing much stops them from, stops the oil from getting past at that point. So we must uh, save the stem seals before that happens. Now there's a sort of intermediate period as well where they've started to grow in size and lost their suppleness, in which case there are seal conditioners which actually can help a lot. Um, they won't get rid of the problem completely, but they'll certainly reduce the oil burn to a certain extent, enough so you're not embarrassed every time you leave a car idling at a, a set of traffic lights. Uh, yeah, Forte seal conditioner works but it will not work on an engine that's actually got a big hole in the stem seals. So once it's got to that point and they do break up, um, then nothing's gonna save it. As long as you catch it before it starts actually breaking up, then you've got a good chance of extending the life of the stem seals to the life of the car as you own it. And that's where the oil changes come in. If you do an oil change regularly, and that's at the very longest one year, and 5,000 miles at the very longest, then you've got a good chance that you're gonna have the stem seals last the complete life of the car itself. And of course, if you catch the stem seals while they're still supple, then they'll remain supple and they won't wear out. And this is a problem not just with BMW, there's a lot of cars around, Toyotas, and I can't remember what else at the moment, they all have this stem seal failure and the biggest change in the operation of these cars was the long service periods. 
from the 5,000, 10,000 mile range that we used to get on older cars, they extended up to 15 or 20,000 miles. And in those situations, the oil would break down if the lifeguard oil wasn't used. And uh, then the rubber and the plastic start getting brittle. So stem seals, very important for the oil changes. And if you're starting to get problems, then use Forte, uh, Forte seal, stem seal conditioner, and that can certainly help. Leave it too long and there's nothing you can do. You must replace the stem seals. And we know that's a really expensive job to do. And uh, BMW, well, it's really not worth considering having it done by BMW because the cost exceeds the value of the car. With Especially with the low prices of these cars at the moment, this is worth five or six thousand pounds and that's it. And we'll get on to that sort of value with a stem seal change by Dick BMW. There's independents that do it for a lot less um, and there's different methods used. There's an Arga kit which you can use to change the stem seals. Um, but it's damn fiddly and very difficult to do with the engine in situ. So whichever way you choose, it's going to be exceedingly hard work or very expensive. And so it's imperative that we save the stem seals before these problems start occurring. Um, on that subject, stem seals, of course, I've already done a video on the PCV valves, pressure control valves for the crankcase. Now, of course, in the crankcase itself, it's, there's no pressure. It's actually a small vacuum of about 40, 50 millibars or so. Um, if you have problems with the pressure control valves, especially where they start getting blocked up, and it's more prevalent on cars with the external PCV, one of the PCVs was moved off of the valve cover on some models, 650 and mine is one of those. In that situation then what can happen is on very short trips then you start getting oil and uh, air with moisture in it uh, combined to form a gunk which actually blocks up the crankcase ventilation and so the valve covers can get blocked up more prevalent on the external PCV but still happens on the other one and in that situation or if your PCV valves have gone brittle then the crankcase uh, pressure will start to increase and it can increase to a point where actually force oil past the valve stem seals whether in good condition or in bad condition it will still get past them because the stem cells are designed to lubricate the valve stem and without that lubrication getting past the stem seal then the valve seize up. So excess crankcase pressure means that oil is forced past the stem seals down the valve guides and into the engine. And so yeah PCV is very important to sort out as well. I'll go through it all on that video. I'll put the link up there somewhere. And so yeah that's the first thing you do is uh, if you're starting to have problems well when you first buy the car change the pressure control valves you don't want any problem with those and uh, clean out the valve covers if you can use a bottle brush as I've done uh, the PCVs twice on this car and the first time I didn't clean out the valve cover and the second time I changed it I noticed there's a lot of gunk still around cleaned it out and the third time when I looked at it for doing the PCV change video on on Meeknet and on my YouTube channel it was clear, so I was very pleased about it. So, so important to clear out your valve covers, change your PCVs and the, the, the diaphragm and the spring and the new plastic covers that come with them. Just don't, don't reuse all the old stuff. Um, and then you won't force oil past the stem seals. And I would have approximate between 50-60% of smoking cases aren't a problem with the stem seals themselves, it's a problem with excess crankcase pressure. And so if you maintain your uh, crankcase ventilation system, the PCVs and the tubing and the valve covers and so on, then you won't push your oil past them. In that situation, the stem seals um, don't fail as such. They're working as they're designed, but unfortunately the increased crankcase pressure will push oil past them and then you'll burn it at the other end. They also increase other problems with oil leakage uh, around the rock covers 
uh, well the valve covers we don't have rockers anymore on these engines and all sorts of sensor seals and the crankshaft seals and so on and the Vanos seals they are all start leaking um, so it's very important that you you maintain the correct vacuum in the crankcase um, so yeah PCV valves very important nothing blocked up okay so we've got oil changes very important if things go wrong use the Forte uh, seal uh, uh, stem seal conditioner and with your oil change also use something like the winds compound which is a slight modifier which looks after plastics and rubbers and it's designed specifically for that doesn't change the viscosity of the oil it maintains the same viscosity um, but it does look after the plastics and rubbers quite successfully so every change I'll do on this every oil change I do on this car from now on I only use the wind stuff to maintain the plastics and the rubbers um, but of course with new oil the fully synthetic oils uh, they look after plastic and rubbers as well but just to make absolutely sure use the wind compound as well just goes into the oil best after an oil change but it will look after rubbers and plastics and that will mean less leaks uh, around the stem seals and also the other things like the valve covers the crankshaft seals all the other seals um, which can leak from of course the seal that it seems to cause most problem and I did have that problem on this car is the alternator bracket now it seems a strange thing to leak but the on some models not on the 6 series as far as I know but on other models they use the alternator bracket as a through path for possibly the oil cooler I'm not sure something else so it's got oil coming out of the bracket back into the bracket and back into the engine block um, on the 6 series that loop isn't used so what they do is they just put a gasket around it uh, so the oil just returns straight back to where it came from and uh, problem is that is with that is if you don't change your oil they'll become brittle and you won't get any leaks to start with but at some point they'll crack and then you'll start getting huge leaks uh, from the alternator bracket and it's quite severe as well it's not a tiny leak that happened on this car I had a clean drive one day and the next year <laughs> a huge great big paddle it actually comes flying out of the uh, alternator bracket once it goes and that's because the gasket cracks and of course to, to maintain that gasket we need the sort of winds compound and the oil changes done regularly with a fully synthetic oil such as the castrol or the shell oil something uh, really good that's got a good pedigree and so I use a fully synthetic uh, castrol oil in this car and now I use the winds compound as well to <laughs> make sure I haven't got any more rubber bits that fail uh, because the alternator bracket um, cost me about 500 quid and that's with Lee Shannon doing it my independent that does the jobs I don't want to do the ones that involve sticking the car up in the air and getting things from underneath which the alternator bracket is done from so yeah I mean that's not a huge expense 500 quid for a what was a 60,000 pounds car it's not the end of the world it's something we want to avoid though which is in, so it's important that we use uh, regular oil changes and use something like the winds compound Okay, so that's the big leak, the alternator bracket and the stem sails, stem seals, and we know what to do with those now. We know to do the regular oil changes every 5,000 miles, one year at the very most. And don't think just because you've done 2,000 miles you don't need to change your oil every year. You do. It's the time period which it seems to be more important on oil change than the miles that you do in it. The, the oil doesn't break down as a lubricant it breaks down as a plasticizer because they are the volatile elements in the oil and they will get um, removed from the oil through evaporation go through the PCV system through the manifold and get popped out the back of the car so yeah very important um, mileage is important 5,000 miles um, but once a year is much more important uh, for the length of time you're going to get out of those stem seals and that's the most important thing because we know how expensive stem seals are to replace um, it's a very long job if you ask BMW to do it no it's going to cost you more than the car's worth this car 2007 model what 15 years old is it uh, 13 years old 
And uh, yeah, I mean, it would far exceed the value of the car, which is 6,000 or 5,000 pounds these days. Um, but that, of course, is just because of the hugely bad reputation the N62 engine has got for going wrong. There's websites that just pan the car completely because of the N62 and wherever the N62 is used, 650, 645, 745, 750, and I'm not quite sure if it's used anywhere else. But the advice for those is just keep away from them because they've got huge bills attached to them. It's all down to oil changes. If you change the oil regularly, then you're not going to have those problems. And sure, the alternator bracket might fail, but it's less likely if you've changed your oil and using some sort of compound. And that's going to be the most expensive repair you're going to get on this engine. OK, so they're the main sort of oil problems that you can have. Well, the oil problem also goes further on to the gearbox and this is of course a six-speed gearbox in my 650 with the ZF gearbox and the mechatronic system and it's neither of the parts of the gearbox or the mechatronics that fails it's the seal between them and it's another rubber seal that just goes brittle and fails now with the old gearboxes the five-speed gearbox like in my E31 over there they won't let you know when they're going to go wrong because they'll keep changing gear perfectly happy and then one day clutch pack explodes absolutely fails and that's it the gearbox needs to be rebuilt at least the six speed one tells you something's going to happen because the gear changes get extortionately harsh and it happened to this car i'd had it for only probably a few months and those gear changes were starting to get quite severe and my friend had a 650 at exactly the same time and he, he was suffering the same problems. Now he did an oil change and we both reset adaptations as well and everything got better for a while. But the main problem is, is the seal between the mechatronics and the, gear, and the valve body itself. And when that starts losing pressure through there, then the gear changes get absolutely horrible. And they get to a point where you start damaging parts of the gearbox itself. So at least the six-speed box tells you something's going to go wrong. And I think it was the higher gears used to be the problem as far as I remember. So fourth and fifth used to thump between them. And as you slowed down between sixth and fifth and fourth, then it was, it was pretty horrible. I mean, it was very noticeable as well. So I decided to do the same as my friend did, which was just change the gearbox fluid and the filter, of course. And um, we'd already changed adaptations. We cleared the adaptations and it made it a lot better. And on MeatNet, I talk about that as well. But I always put as a coder that the thing that's most important is the mechatronic seals. And there's two seals that run between the mechatronics unit and the valve body. And if they start failing, you lose pressure. And then it will change gear badly to a point where you'll start destroying the gearbox. And you, you can notice it straight away because it really does thump between the gears. It is very severe. And that much torque put through the clutch packs and the brake bands, that's going to break something quite quickly. So yes, the seals are only a few pence each, 50p a quid or something. And they're easy to change. When you're changing the fluid, you drop the whole pan. You have to, to get to the filter, obviously and uh, change the filter and then it's just a few more bolts and down comes the mechatronics unit and there's two gaskets which go between the mechatronics unit and the valve body change those and i'll put a link down uh, probably in the description or you can look on MeatNet, of course where i talk about harsh gear changes and i go through how that mechatronic uh, seal is positioned and how it's changed and so on okay so that's both the gearbox well first of all another point worth saying about the gearbox of course is that if you change the gearbox fluid regularly and that's 50 1000 150 200 000 miles then you probably won't have got the problem with the seals because the gearbox fluid is the same as any oil it loses its uh, volatile components and then rubbers and plastic start failing so i can't be sure on that but I can be sure that if you change the mechatronic seals, it sorts out all the harsh, harsh gear changes. And it's very important to do those well before um, the gearbox fails. If you start getting harsh changes, gearbox filter, gearbox fluid, 
mechatronic seals and you'll be good for uh, another 100,000 or 50,000 to 100,000 miles. And it certainly sorted out this car, fluid and filter changed, mechatronic seals changed, lovely gear changes, not a jot of a problem since. And that was done four or three or four, no, probably five years ago now. So yeah, no problems at all. And I've done a few thousand miles. Forgot to mention at the start was of course the coolant transfer pipe. Now this is a bit of a bugbear on the N62 engine. Uh, the first you know of it is you start getting a small weep of coolant near the water pump and usually the water pump's replaced and the problem's just the same. And that's because the coolant transfer pipe is starting to leak and what's happened is the front of the pipe has corroded and the seal can't maintain pressure anymore and it starts leaking coolant and it pops out near the water pump through a weep hole. And uh, to repair it, well you can't repair it, you replace it uh, the usual plan is, well, BMW will charge you more than the worth of the car to replace it because it involves removing huge lumps of the engine, I'm afraid, and a lot of work. And, uh, yeah, to do it properly, the engine needs to come out of the car. And so you can imagine how much that's going to cost you. Now, there are some fixes for this. Um, some industrious people have come up with easier fixes. And the first one was to saw the pipe in half and to remove it in two pieces and then to fit an extending coolant transfer pipe because that required the removal of the manifold and the associated bits and bobs which the manifold that, that has to come off for that and the valley pan cover and the pipe itself is reasonably expensive but it's a darn sight cheaper than getting BMW to replace it. And then finally there was another one which was, I can't remember quite what it's called but it's some sort of stent and um, that could be done from the front of the engine so you could remove the water pump. There's a certain amount of sanding metal down and then a new seal put in place and that apparently works quite well and that's pretty cheap as well. But this problem is caused by the same reason that the stem, sails, uh, stem seals fail and all the other gaskets around the engine start to fail is the long service. And usually what happens is the coolant is replaced by something other than BMW's coolant. And what people don't realise is the BMW coolant isn't just antifreeze, it isn't just there to uh, run the engine at temperatures over boiling point and to stop the coolant freezing in very low temperatures. No, it's full of all sorts of bits and bobs. It's got anti-corrosion agents, it's got rubberizers, uh, plasticizers, and lubricants in it. So it isn't just an antifreeze, and people don't realize that and just replace it with just some off-the-shelf antifreeze, thinking that it's going to do fine. Because, I mean, let's face it, BMW coolant is a bit more expensive than off-the-shelf stuff. It's not that expensive, though, I'll tell you that for much. And I always use BMW coolant. Because if you don't use those, then parts are going to corrode, and things like the water pump are going to seize up, uh, the bearing's going to fail in it, so on. So it's very important that you use BMW coolant and then you can maintain the seals around your engine and stop corrosion happening. So you don't want corrosion happening in your engine anyway. And I mean, the coolant transfer pipe is just the first of many things that are going to fail. Um, you've got the, the heater valves and the heater matrix, um, auxiliary pumps, radiators. The radiators will start disintegrating and sending bits of rust around the system. No, it's very important that you use BMW coolant. Uh, otherwise, you are going to have problems with the coolant transfer pipe. And this is a problem that started probably after five or six years of the N62 engine being out in the field. Just at the point, of course, when it came out of the BMW servicing and warranty period. And uh, people started replacing the proper BMW coolant with some off the shelf, shelf stuff. So, yeah, number one on the coolant transfer pipe, just stop it happening in the first place by using BMW coolant. It's not that expensive and change it at reasonable interval, intervals, which is about once every three years, because coolant, like oil, does start to fail. It starts to break down and lose the more volatile components of it, and those are the bits that stop things corroding and stop the plastics and rubbers hardening. So, yeah. Coolant transfer pipe, just use the correct coolant. 
So that is really the bottom line to all of this. The main problems with the BMW 6 Series N62 and the six-speed Mechatronics gearbox is the long service intervals. Um, I'm not sure if BMW knew this or not, but they break down and they break down severely. So that's the takeaway message really. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.